So in part two of chapter two on strategic planning, next we will learn about this concept of competitive advantage. Uh, the, the big motivation for companies to <clears throat> engage in this process of strategic planning and write out a marketing plan is so that the company is able to identify its source of competitive advantage. And again, I'm hoping that this is a term that you've heard earlier in your business courses. So it's a unique feature of a company uh, and its products that is perceived by its target market as being significant and superior to the competition. So it's not actually a tangible asset, but it's more of a perception that a company's consumers have in their mind about a particular product or a company being superior to its competition. So there are three types of competitive advantage. One is cost leadership, where one company enjoys advantage because of its low prices. The other one is product service differentiation, where consumers perceive one company or brand as being superior because in their minds, that particular product or service is superior uh, due to some reason than its competition. And then the third one is niche strategy where one particular company enjoys, uh, is a specialty or it has offers specialized product for a niche marketplace. So look at this example here of Walmart and uh, take a guess or answer the question on what type of competitive advantage Walmart enjoys. The second one is that of Rolex. It's a luxury brand. And uh, let's see if you can identify uh, and, and what type of competitive advantage Rolex enjoys. The last one is of Goya Foods, which is a brand that specializes in Hispanic American cooking. And uh, uh, what type of competitive advantage would you believe that Goya enjoys? in the marketplace. So the key thing to remember when companies invest in building competitive advantage is that it is sustainable, which means it cannot be copied or mimicked by its competition. The second motivation for companies to engage in the strategic planning process is to identify the strategic window. So if you remember from the definition of strategic planning, we talked about strategic planning being this process of cre creating and maintaining a fit between the company and the market. So strategic windows are those limited periods during which the fit is at its optimum. And companies use two different planning tools in order to identify those strategic windows where there is an optimal fit between the company's strengths, its resources, and the marketplace. The first one is called an Ainsoft's matrix, and your textbook also gives you a very detailed narrative uh, on this. I'm going to stress on two planning tools in this lecture. So the first one is Ainsoft's, as I just said, and there is it's a matrix uh, that is plotted on an XY plot. On the X axis is the company's product, and so the company has two options in order to grow: either hold on to its current product or come up with a new product. And on the y-axis is the market. So either stay with the present market or come up with a new market for the product. So if you plot that on a, four quad on a quadrant, you come up with four different growth opportunities for the company. The first one is market penetration. And this is where the company decides to stay with the same product it has and identify or build new markets. So somebody like Starbucks might open up new stores in markets where there isn't a Starbucks in order to grow via the strategy of market penetration. Product development is coming up with a new product for its current market. So Starbucks has tried to do that with offering lunch items for its current consumers. Market development is staying with its present product but attracting new customers uh, for its current product. And so Starbucks has done that, and mostly companies do that by uh, internationalizing their operations. So when Starbucks opened up its stores in China and in India and other emerging markets, that would be an example of market development. Diversification is new products 
in new markets uh, where the company develops completely new products for brand new customers. And so Starbucks has done that with by going into the water business, bottled water business. They own a brand called Ethos. Um, Starbucks has also produced music, has also invested in the movie business. And so that would be an example of di diversification. Here's another example of how Coca-Cola has used the Ainsoft's matrix uh, for um, identifying strategic windows of growth, right? So I'll pause there for a few seconds so that you can, pa uh, you can uh, eyeball uh, this illustration. And, and, and then, of course, revisit it later, too. The second planning tool that companies use in order to um, identify their strategic window is called a portfolio matrix. And so uh, what a portfolio matrix does is it allows the company to analyze its current portfolio of the different business units that it owns. And based on the status of each business unit, make decisions about how to allocate resources. So the two uh, uh, variables that the companies take into consideration on the x-axis is the market share dominance, which is what percent of the market, sh market belongs to my company's product. And on the y-axis is the market growth rate. So at what percent is the market growing? Right. So if you look at the quadrant here, it's often referred to as the BCG portfolio matrix. BCG stands for Boston Consulting Group, which is a very famous market research company. And they were the ones that invented um, this portfolio analysis tool. So on the left quadrant is referred to as a star, which means these are brands or products the company uses that are uh, not only do they have a huge share of the market, so 50% share of the market, um, but they're also in marketplaces that are growing at a very fast rate, right? On the right quadrant is referred to as a problem child. And uh, this is, as you can see from the position, it's in a very high growth rate market, but it doesn't have a very good share, so it has a very low share of the market, so it's not a market leader. And the reason it's a, mark, it's a problem child is because it needs cash in order to move from here and become a star for the company. The quadrant below here is referred to as a cash cow. So it's in a low growth market, but it has a very high market share and produces, brings in a lot of revenue for the company. So believe it or not, a brand like Tide a laundry detergent is actually a cash cow for the company, which is Procter & Gamble, because Tide has over 40% of the market share in the liquid laundry detergent market. The right-hand side is called a dog, um, and it's a dog because not only is it sitting in a low growth market, but it also has a very low market share. So again, the BCG portfolio matrix or planning tool is a way for a company, a large company, to look at its different products, look at its different strategic business units, and see the position of each one relevant to the market share and the market growth. Okay, so another example here with Starbucks and kind of gives you an idea of how its different products are either cash cows, uh, problem childs, stars, or dogs. Okay. So the whole point of doing this uh, portfolio analysis is to decide, make decisions about resource allocation. So should I, should the company build? Should the company hold? Which means whatever is it that I'm investing is making sense. Should I harvest? Which means take out money from that particular um, strategic business unit or SBU or should I divest, get rid of it? So usually when companies see dogs, they try to get rid of it or divest it, okay? So I think um, uh, that's all I have on this uh, second part for chapter two, and I hope you find the lecture helpful. Thank you.